I am back again with a new class and in today's class we will see how to write the algorithm and how to draw the flowchart to find the factorial value of a given number. And before we start our class, if I ask you that how many different ways can a deck of cards be shuffled or how many different ways can the letters of a word be arranged? Or how many different trucks does a company need to supply its products in different districts or states? Then what will be your answer? I know what your answer will be. You will answer that we need the help of permutations and combinations. Or more precisely, we need the help of factorial, which is one of the important functions in probability and statistics especially when we are living in the era of machine learning and data science. So factorial plays a very important role in mathematics, statistics, as well as in programming language. And we all are aware that how mathematically we find the factorial of a given number. Suppose the number that we want to factorial of, then if it is n, then the factorial how we calculate? we multiply n by the, all the subsequent numbers till 1. So suppose if we want to find the factorial value of 5, then how do we calculate? We multiply 5 by 4, then definitely by 3, then 2, and then 1. And we know this value is 120. But in the programming, what we'll do is we will start from 1 that multiplication then we will increase the number so 2 then it will be 3 and then we will continue that multiplication till that given number so if it is 5 then we will start our multiplication from 1 then the next value 2 until we will continue that multiplication till 5 and this logic we will apply to find the factorial value of any given positive integer so let's first write the algorithm so what we do, the first step we know that is starting of that processing or that algorithm. Then what we will do, we will input that number whose factorial value we want to find. Then, then we will check if that entered number is negative or not. If suppose that number is negative, then we will display that number is negative and we are not finding the factorial value of any negative integer. Rather, we are finding or we are trying to find the factorial value of a positive integer. So if it is a negative number, by mistake we have entered, then we will display the corresponding message. We will throw that error and then we will stop our processing. But if that number is not negative, means if it is a positive integer including 0 then we will go to the next step which is step 4 in our case then what we will do we will take two variables in our program first variable say it is i and we will set the initial value of that variable as 1 and another variable as you can see here that we have taken fact which is the main variable where we will store the factorial value of that given number and the initial value of that variable again here we will set as 1. Then we will check whether i the variable the first variable that we have taken whether that is greater than n n is what the number for which we are going to find the factorial value whether i is greater than n or not if yes then we will display the factorial value whatever value we have stored in that variable fact always the initial value of that variable i is 1 now suppose we want to know that what is the factorial value of 0 so this will satisfy this condition i is 1 and n is 0 so i 1 is greater than 0 so in this case it will display the factorial value and in this variable fact what value we have stored till now factorial value is 1 and we know the factorial of 0 is 1 so it will display the factorial value of that entered number which is 0 and it will stop the processing so it will go to step 8 step 8 is the stopping of that processing but if i is not greater than n means if i is equal to n 
or i is less than n now suppose this time we have entered the value of n is 1 we want to know the factorial value of 1 we know that value is will be 1 only the factorial value but in this case what condition it will satisfy i is not greater than n that means it will be false this condition checking and it will go to step 6 now suppose if we want to know the factorial value of 2 then again i whether i is greater than n or not i is 1 and n is 2 so again it is not satisfying so it is false or it is no so in both the cases if it is not 0 if the value of n is not 0 then for all other cases it will go to step 6 and what step 6 does it calculates the factorial value what is the formula fact is calculated as fact multiplied by i so initially the value of fact is what 1 and initial value of i is what it is 1 so initially again the fact will have 1 now what will happen then we will increase the value of i by 1 so now from 1 now i will become 2 and it will go to step 5 so we are iterating the process we are repeating the process now suppose we wanted to know the factorial value of 1 then in that case i is 2 and n is 1 so the result of this condition will be true or yes so it will display the factorial value and that will be 1 only because still now we have calculated factorial as 1 multiplied by 1 so that is 1 but suppose if we wanted to find the factorial value of 5 then what will happen then 5 means now the value of i is 2 and value of n is 5 so this condition checking will be false and it will go down i mean it will go to the step 6 and then the factorial value will be again calculated so in the previous step the factorial value was 1 now 1 will be multiplied by 2 so this time fact will have 2 i will be increased by 1 so i will become 3 and it will go back to step 5 this condition checking will be false it will go to step 6 this time 2 will be multiplied by 3 because i is 3 now so 3 multiplied by 2 will be 6 so fact will have 6 and then it will go to step 7 now i will become 4 and it will again go back to step 5 again the result of this condition will be false so this will come to step 6 so this time 6 the fact has value 6 and 6 will be multiplied by 4 because our value current value of i is 4 so 6 multiplied by 4 it will be 24 and then value of i will be 5 and it will go back again to step 5 the again this condition will be false it will come to step 6 and 24 now this time will be multiplied by 5 so that value or that result will be 120 so fact will have value 120 it will come to step 7 the value of i will become 6 and it will go again to step 5 now i is 6 and value of n is 5 so what will happen the result of this condition checking is true it is yes so it will display the factorial value and what value it will display the value that we have stored in this variable fact and what value it has now it has 120 so it will display the 120 and which is the factorial value of 5 and it will then go to step 8 which is actually to stop that process or to stop our algorithm and this is how we calculate the factorial value of a given number now we will see the 2d representation of this algorithm means flowchart so we will start the process then then we know we will input the number of which we want to know the factorial value so we have entered and accordingly we have used the symbol then what will happen then in the algorithm what we did we checked if the entered number was negative or not if it was negative then we displayed the corresponding message otherwise we went ahead means we went to the next step so we are checking whether n the entered number is less than 0 or not if it is 0 if it is true that means number is negative and we will stop our processing if it is false means either the number is 0 or positive then we will go to step 4 the next step and there what we are doing we are setting two variables their initial values of those two variables i is equal to 1 and fact is equal to 1 now based on these two values again we are moving forward we are checking whether i the initial value of i or at any point of time 
whether i is greater than n the entered value the value of i we are iterating we are changing but n is fixed whether i is greater than n or not if it is yes then we are displaying the factorial value and then we are stopping the process but if it is not then what we are doing we are calculating the factorial value as per this formula fact multiplied by i and that value we are again storing in the same variable fact and then the next step the next processing we are increasing the value of i by one and then we are repeating the process that we have in step five so again we are checking the we are comparing the values of i and n and as per the logic that we have already seen we are proceeding till this condition satisfies or the result of this condition checking becomes true or yes so this is the main logic of finding the factorial value of a given number i hope this class was helpful for you with that hope i end today's class thank you